Hello everybody. Welcome to another Ken Samira series. Today we have our very own Xinwen Zhou. She works here at Atril with Professor Akati. She's a PhD student. And she works with payment sustainability, with life cycle assessment, payment rehabilitation, and payment preservation. So let's give her a warm round of applause so she can <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Chi Wen Zhou. Um, today I'm going to present the research I did for my master's thesis, and it's about the payment preservation and maintenance schedule evaluation using a life cycle uh, assessment tool. So, the, my talk today will be following, and I will start from the introduction. So, uh, here is the US roadway map, uh, and as you see, in 2017, uh, more than uh, the roadway of US states is, uh, exceed 4.26 million miles, and th there is 3.2 trillion of vehicle miles traveled along this roadway. And uh, 187 million gallons of fuel were consumed by those vehicles around, uh, in 2017, around 119 million of dollars are spent on those national highways. Given this like a uh, significant number, you can see uh, this transportation play a very important, significant and important role in energy consumption and the cost. So, but however, even though there, uh, you, there are a lot of 30, more than 35 percent of the interstate highway and expressway they are not in good condition. But the great, there is a great shrinkage in the fund allocated to the payment infrastructure, uh, construction or rehabilitation as this figure shows. And but the cost of construction and the rehabilitation rehabilitation actually increasing steadily. So now agencies are trying to figure out some cost effective and environmental friendly strategies to build payment to improve the payment performance. So that's why we come to payment preservation. Payment preservation is a kind of cost-effective and environmental friendly strategy for maintaining payment service and extending payment service line while using less resources. So it usually consists of preventive maintenance, routine maintenance, and the minor rehabilitation. In our, but in most of the studies, they only focus on the cost benefits of payment preservation, a single payment preservation using life cycle cost analysis. But few of them try to figure, because if you see some kind of costly treatment, they can last longer, but they are costly. Some treatment, they may cost saving, but they last shorter time. So it's kind of balance. You may find a trade-off between cost and the performance. And also, before the final construction, it usually not only a single treatment. It can be a series or a sequence of treatment applied before the rehabilitation or final reconstruction. So we, we do not, we want, if we want to see the benefits of payment preservation, we should not only focus on a single treatment, but instead of, uh, we should focus instead of a, a schedule, a payment preservation schedule. That's why we try to develop a user-friendly LC tool to help us to figure out the uh, environmental benefits if we use different kinds of preservation schedules. And the main feature of our tool will be the first we will incorporate the life cycle inventory data <coughs> for AC and the PCC preservation treatment. Uh, I mean the preservation treatment on AC and the PCC payment. And also we need a decision, we will in put a decision tree in this tool to help the user select appropriate the treatment. And uh, as long as a treatment is selected, we need to uh, kind of model to practice the treatment lifetime. And uh, finally, a preservation schedule can be designed. Also, to make the computation easier to conduct, we implement the PI icon in this tool. Uh, also, uh, in the life cycle assessment stages, we use the uh, in the use stages, we use models for rolling resistance and the heat island impact from literature. And so let's start the first stage, we de design a preservation schedule. And uh, here is the list for the preservation treatment for asphalt concrete surface treatment and uh, 
or PCC uh, surface payment. If we want to select a treatment, here we take an example to explain this decision tree. So for AC surface payment preservation uh, payment with AADT less than 5,000, and then we, fr uh, we first come to the structural problems. It's noted that we focus on four uh, main distresses, alligator cracking, rafting, longitudinal, and the transverse cracking. So then now the, the we, we try to focus on the uh, structural problem at the beginning, if it has severe pro uh, structural problems here. So A is alligator cracking, as we mentioned. So if it's MH, it means like it's medial, uh, in the distress extent severity, but high in the distress extent. So uh, if it have severe uh, structural problems, then we come to the left hand side when you go to the major rehabilitation techniques. And that, but it's, if it doesn't have the structural severe structural problems, we will go to the PCI value to see how can we characterize the treatment for different PCI value. And under high PCI value, it's like preferred, it's relatively good, and we just need to apply some very minor treatment like the AC overlay or cracking ceiling. But if the PCI value is relatively low, but you see if previously we allowed the user to think it doesn't have the structural problem, but it still have PCI value very low here, although it's very almost impossible, but we still allow this like a uh, help a user if they input the wrong information. So if they input the PCI value is very low, that means we still need some rehabilitation techniques. But if the PCI value is between 60 to 75, then we need to go to check some other parameters like the longitudinal, uh, how is the fatigue cracking and the rotting, and then how is the longitudinal transverse cracking. Finally, we can provide applicable treatment for the user. They can pick one for their schedule. As long as a uh, preservation treatment selected, then we go to the lifetime estimation because we find out we want to determine the analyzed period. And in our lifetime estimation framework, we start with the basic linear model, which indicates the PCI change with time. So if we know the initial, and every time we apply a new treatment, the PCI zero is 100, it means that the treatment is brand new and the PCI condition is very good. And then when time goes by, M is the PCI deterioration rate, and then the PCI T is the, at the end of treatment life, what's the PCI value? If we set a threshold for the PCI T, then we can determine what's the lifetime T here. So the key point is we need the what's the deterioration rate. And now, so that we start our data collection process, we distributed the questionnaire through uh, US. DOTs in 2007 to 2018, and this is the responses we got from the different states. And the, the, in the question, we mainly asked first, what's the typical uh, air traffic traffic information, the truck info percentage, and the payment condition when you apply the uh, preservation treatment. Here is example result here, and then we also asked. Based on their application, what's the, the usually the lifetime they got for different kind of preservation treatment, and also finally we uh, <coughs> three critical factors that can impact uh, life, uh, preservation performance, which is existing PCI, AADT, and the trust percentage. We ask the uh, engineers <coughs> about their opinion of the perspective <coughs> importance of these factors, and then all this information we will use and. That's what, uh, here is, we only put three critical factors, but maybe most of you are familiar, temperature is also a critical impact to payment uh, performance. But we are not included in this study because based on the responses we connected, we collected, it shows like different area, I mean the, based on the temperature zone, we group into three areas. And they, they don't have like significant difference when they practice in the lifetime. That's why we first, we, in our case, we don't put temperature as a critical factor for now. But if we collect more data, we can update the, uh, the models. So based on the information we collected, we can, deter deter we can determine a average deterioration rate M. 
but as you know we have different conditions, performance under different conditions, then how should we take those conditions into consideration? Then we input, input a, a just factor F here using hierarchy, a, a analytical hierarchy process to see what's the contribution of different factors. Finally, we can create a model like this one. So we can see all the factors we mentioned before, the critical factors are implemented <coughs> in the address factor. So this is the final models for all the treatments we list in the previous slide. But and it's noted that this model is only developed for the treatment on AC payment. For the PCC payment, it's not a uh, it's, in, it's not to, uh, similar to payment, uh, press S4 payment. That's why we use uh, literature review data for the uh, lifetime estimation for the treatment on its PCC payment. And uh, to verify our models, we also provide the lifetime from the model under poor and under good conditions. And compare this result with the data we, we collect from the literature and it, see, it seems like uh, most of the data, they are within the range from the literature review. But the data we collected are more uh, uh, lying in a uh, narrow range. It means the data in under good, con the lifetime under poor and under good condition, they are relatively close. It's because the, more, the information we collect from the uh, questionnaires, uh, they provide more like a uh, conservative estimation so most of the estimation are closed that's why our that's the limitation of our models so in our case if we the framework works but if we can input more uh, more data from the existing application of preservation we can help build the uh, model most make the model more stable and more uh, validated and uh, Okay, finish the schedule design, we need to come to our target. We want to do the evaluation, life cycle assessment on this schedule. So uh, if, if you're not familiar, I, this is the uh, technical definition for life cycle assessment. It quantifies the environmental impact <coughs> throughout a uh, product. So regarding payment, the product is the uh, payment. It usually starts from uh, including five stages. We will talk in more detail in next page, and the the LC guideline followed by following the ISO 40,000 series, as this uh, figure shows. So in our case, we see the LC uh, system boundary from the uh, input. We cal we we try to uh, uh, calculate the environmental flow flow of material production construction maintenance, your stage, the operating of the pavement, and the end, we may do some disposal or land filling or recycling. Also, we have some uh, holy process interacting between these per, uh, stages. So, but in this case, we focus as, since the pavement preservation is part of maintenance, so we only focus on the materials of production and the construction within the maintenance stage and the, in the payment <coughs> interaction between payment and the environment in the use stage. So first from the material and construction stage, we first consider the unit, uh, we first use the unit process to compile the material, the construction impacts. So for here it's an example for unit process like S4 binder. It includes crude oil extraction, flurry, transportation, refining, etc. So the unit process of S4 binder will compile all the impacts with, uh, of this unsub <coughs> process and then summing up, it will be the result of the impact of a, a unit of S4 binder. And then because in industrial and the uh, in payment industrial, pay actor is more commonly used to communicate between conductors contractors and uh, ag agencies. That's why we also want to use PI to summarize all the unit processes. For example, two inch is the overlay per square yard. It's a called a pay, kind of PI term. And uh, in this PI term, it including the, all the material like the binder used in this two inch is the overlay, all the aggregate increase in use. 
and all the construction process you need to use to provide this AC only. And uh, so in summarize these preservation activities they can broke down into tasks. So if if for example the code in place recycling and apply a thick AC overlay on top of the code in place recycling, you need to two tasks at least. You need to do code in place recycling first and then you need to apply AC overlay. So this is two tasks. The first task, uh, the, the AC overlay task, you can also categorize as like pay items of two inch AC overlay and also pay items like uh, two tap uh, ta coating before applying the uh, AC overlay. And then finally, each pay item also summarized by summing up all the unit process. Uh, here example or uh, here is an equation by uh, computing the impact for each pay item. So you see in the in each pay item including the material impact, the hauling impact, and the construction or what we call equipment impact. And the, in the use stage, we first consider the payment roughness. So it's about the irregularities of the payment service, which affect the right quality and usually measured by international roughness index. Here we use uh, the model from the in 2018 and to quantify the estimate energy consumption per vehicle distance uh, under different uh, IRI value. And uh, the, for the payment texture, it's a, it's a smaller wavelength and uh, then payment roughness. So it's primarily controlling the friction and the noise. And we use the model from Zaba and Chati to simulate the percentage increase in energy consumption per unit increase of texture in mid profile depth. And the heat island impact, we use the model from Sand Wrestler in 2017. They can, they, because they use radiant forcing to uh, simulate the long range of energy in the surface area or covered by pavement. And then they convert this radiant force into uh, an equivalent carbon dioxide emission to atmosphere using this equation. And this T is, shows like with time how this uh, global mean potential will accumulate. Finally, we finish this uh, analysis step. We want to develop tools like can uh, incorporate all the, uh, the step we mentioned before. And this is the tool framework. First, we need a basic information or traffic information, structural information. And then we come to the schedule design. The schedule need, uh, as we mentioned before, we first select a, a schedule of treatment based on the existing condition. And then we estimate its lifetime. And then select second treatment, estimate lifetime. Finally, we can determine the analyze period for the whole schedule. As long as the schedule is uh, the analyzed period is determined, we can come to the LC stages, go through each uh, each stage uh, one by one to summarize overall impact and uh, produce the final results, including the environmental impact and energy consumption. So here is uh, the tool user for SPC. This is the main input, so input the traffic and structure information. Then we come to the schedule design. So the user is required, they can input the, for the schedule this design has first and second and third activity. For each activity, they determine the task they need. And each task, they uh, input the pay items by uh, searching and all customer design, customized design. And the example of pay item, this is the overview of, overview of a pay item, the general information. And the detailed information of the PID it have the material mix and the equipment. For example, this is a, the PID uh, mix design page, and you will see what kind of material will be used for this mix design, and uh, what's the quantity, and even the hauling distance you need to transport the material. And finally, uh, since we need to simulate the <coughs> impact resulting from payment roughness and texture, we also need to see how the IRI and the texture will progress with the time, the service life of their treatment. So for the IR progression, in this case, we are assuming a linear progression within the, in, the, in their service life. So the user is required to input the 
deterioration rate of each uh, of progression rate for IRI, and then they can progress a smooth uh, a pro uh, we can plot a IR progression for the schedule, and the, for the texture progression based on the analyzed by professors uh, by Chasi, and uh, they they found that the texture will not change very significantly within the service life of a preservation treatment. That's why we're assuming a constant value of texture within their service life. And the finally, uh, fin finish uh, the tool development. We apply some case studies using this tool. And the first one, we try to figure out, uh, apply different schedule on a low volume traffic load AC on a of AC payment. And the, the goal is to quantify the impact of delayed uh, preservation techniques. So here is some basic input as we mentioned that we need some input at the beginning and then this is the schedule we designed for. The first schedule we applied two kinds of treatment but the second and third and fourth one we didn't apply treatment at the beginning. We let the payment keep deteriorating and then at the year, second year, third or fourth year we apply a, 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 a set up plus thin AC overlay. And this is lifetime was estimated based on the lifetime estimation model. And uh, here is IR progression. We're assuming that the uh, the deterioration with the payment without doing anything will be faster than when you apply some treatment. And, uh, let's see. This is the overall result, and you can see the total project and uh, total annualized impact are lowest for the schedule and which when you apply the treatment at the beginning and uh, if you no delay that one uh, schedule is the no delay case for the other three bcd cases they all have a delay of two three or four years and in, in case it, it indicates like a higher impact it's mainly because when you delay the uh, re preservation or rehabilitation, you let the payment deteriorate very faster. And uh, in our most of the study, the use stage will dominate the overall results. And uh, when you deteriorate the faster, that means the use stage impact will increase very faster. And the second case, we try to apply the schedules under different traffic level. And uh, we have three traffic levels, 5,000. 5, 15 and 30,000 and uh, we apply the same schedules to this trip, uh, this payment and uh, the lifetime. So here we have another IR progression, assuming like, sorry, excuse me. So the IRI for the same treatment will be, uh, the progression rate for the same treatment will be higher if the, if the traffic volume is high. And uh, it's clear that the this is the uh, breakdown result. With since the use stage dominate the overall result, and you can see the the higher the traffic volume, the the overall impact is significantly increased a lot because the most of the study the the use stage impact are dominating the overall results, and uh, the heat island impact is increasing for so five thousand uh, AADT level is because. This why it's mainly big, uh, focus on the lifetime uh, because the the 500 level traffic the schedule lifetime is the longer and the, the uh, heat island impact we calculate the only variable in here is the time so that's why it increase it's larger than the other two cases <coughs> and now another case started what we want to see the relative significance of heat island impact. So if we uh, put the uh, the same pay, uh, the same payment in different under different traffic level and uh, the same payment since they will contribute they will produce similar uh, heat island impact result but uh, they will have different impact when the traffic increase total impact when the traffic increase so the relative uh, impact of heat island contribution will decrease from 97 to 13. And uh, here is a case study. We run this case study over the all the states in U.S. And if because uh, heat island impact also impact by the the climate, the uh, 
the temperature. So temperature is also a key point here, and you can see the difference. The in different state, the contribution of heat island in the youth stage will be different. So this is all the case study I did before, and the, uh, here we will have a summary final. Uh, in some in our payment tool was developed for agency and the contractors, and the national data inventory database was developed and incorporated in this tool. And the PI job framework was used for the ease of implementation. So, and based on the case study result, we can see timely treatment is very important. Delay treatment will increase the energy consumption because the faster treatment deterioration rates. And the use in impact compensation, including heat island rolling resistance, and uh, it's highly sensitive to traffic, as we see the last two cases. And then finally, we have some discussion because the decision tree is only based on previous experience. And so it's, you only use it based on the information you can input. But if for the schedule design for the future treatment, you don't know exactly what the payment will deserve, what the distress it will happen. So we cannot select the future treatment. That's why it's a limitation that you only the decision tree is only used for the first treatment. And the second is the lifetime estimation was only developed for the S4 surface payment. And if this model, it can be improved if we input more data to feed the model to help make the model more spread a little wider range. And uh, it's import also important to add weather uh, related parameters in that model if we can collect more detailed information. That's all my presentation. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, you have done a lot of work for this. Like, I was just curious, what do you think is the thing, uh, well, the most important thing that we should focus on next that you think is most sensitive when we calculate the life cycle event? Like, like what's the link you think that is still missing somehow? As far as I know, the IR progression is a part of them. If you remember, the IR progression I, pro I make is all based on the deterioration rate I assumed. So we don't know exactly what IR progress along the service life of different treatment. And also, because in that one, it's contributed a lot for the use stage impact. That's why it's very critical. And also, uh, I think uh, one more thing is the PCI Prediction, PCI prediction. So PCI prediction here is also a little way. So that's why. Uh, because what we use is kind of if we delay the application of preservation schedule, how how the PCI decrease when they when we do nothing. Well, what we base is based on the experience. The input of value they will decrease like twenty uh, in PCI. But we don't know exactly how that it goes. It's still uh, like an unknown area. You said that you fed your model with uh, life times that engineers replied on a yeah. survey. Why, why did you use that approach? Why did you try to find that lifetime somewhere else? Is it possible? We, we can How find good is it? We find what we find from like literature, there are also always a range. For example, if you remember, we have the. Review data, they always arrange. You don't know exactly what they got and how many data samples they collect to find this range. So, the only thing we need, uh, so that's why we need to the more direct information from like uh, uh, engineer from DOT, what's their application when they apply this 
preservation treatment, what's their lifetime. They provide a number and then we feed them number into our model. So each, each one of the treatments has a different life duration. Yes. Oh, okay. In each treatment, you you need ask the, ask the engineer about their opinion of the weight of different factors. The weight of different factor will be different. For example, if a micro service, maybe the AAPT is not as significant as the pro, the one in. You mentioned the limitation of the three. Yeah, can you elaborate on that? Sorry. You mentioned there was a limitation of the. I mean, it only used for the first treatment selection. So, uh, if you remember here. Uh, for the AADT smaller than 5,000. And you see we need the information of AADT. We need the information of struck, uh, the distresses, the extent and the severity. So for the first treatment, because we apply treatment right now, we know what the payment condition is. We know what the distress is. Then we can apply this decision tree to provide uh, some alternative selection for the user. But for the next treatment, because it's an assumption, a future work, we don't know how our payment will progress to next stage. Then how can we input this information to the decision tree? We cannot. That's why it's only useful for the first treatment selection. But if they only want to select a single treatment, this decision tree is not